Welcome to the fifth session of Within the Shadow of the Galilean, The Way We Walk. Let me uh, briefly bring up three points from previous sessions. It's important to remember that Jesus' ministry was a political religious campaign proclaiming the kingdom of God or God's reign. It is important to remember that Jesus' strategy was to go from village to village in Galilee, forming small discipleship groups, some of whom followed him as an itinerant person. It's important to remember that people were attracted to the discipleship groups because Jesus was known for doing deeds of power, for healings and exorcisms that we know today as miracles. During this session, we will explore how Jesus was also known as a teacher with authority. Throughout Christian tradition, the teachings of Jesus have always been preached. But to preach the teachings of Jesus and to explore the teachings of Jesus within Jesus' own history are two different things. Exploring the Jesus of history and Jesus' teaching are not the same as applying the teachings of Jesus in the 21st century. So with that in mind, let's turn to Jesus, the Jesus of history and his teachings to his discipleship groups while he was alive. So let's start with the landscape of Palestine during the lifetime of Jesus. The first five books of the Hebrew Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, are known within the Jewish tradition as the Torah or the Pentateuch. All teachings within the Jewish faith in Palestine during the lifetime of Jesus focus and centered and were grounded in the Torah. This cannot be overemphasized. Any Jew teaching a Jew in Galilee, which was part of the Roman province of Palestine, had to center their teaching in the Torah. In the Christian New Testament, the word Torah is translated by the Greek word for law, but Torah Law in the New Testament is not like the law that we think of today. It is not debated and voted on within any type of political system. There were no political leaders, be they elected or chosen by parties, who were debating and putting laws into action to support capitalist, socialist, or communist perspectives during the time of Jesus. In a general sense, the word of the emperor was law, and that law was implemented by local governors and those working for the local governors. But the Jewish people in the Roman Empire were given latitude to explore and interpret the Torah, in ways that help them live their daily life and practice their religious rituals. In the Jewish tradition, this is called halakha. It is the way we walk. Halakha is the way that Jewish leaders have been interpreting the Torah, the law, the Pentateuch, for thousands of years going back into the Hebrew Bible. It is also the way that Jesus taught his communities of disciples. So let's begin by looking at two significant religious groups interpreted the Torah Halakha for those who were members of their communities, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. These are the two most prominent Jewish groups in Palestine during the time of Jesus. You may recognize the names Pharisee 
and Sadducee from the Gospels we have in our New Testament. Both groups are trying to attract people to their way of teaching the Torah. The Sadducees were made up predominantly of the wealthiest families of the Palestinian Jewish community. Their way of teaching the Torah meant that the rituals and practices were primarily confined to the temple, and it seems they did not support the growing influence of synagogues around Palestine. It did not hurt that they were also the ones who controlled the practices at the temple in Jerusalem. The Sadducees were the religious group that was most easily ready to support the Roman Empire and in return were supported by the Roman Empire, although members of the Sadducee differed in their degree of collaboration. It is not surprising then that their way of interpreting the Torah was very conservative and supported the status quo of the time. Yet, at the same time, they were very interested in implementing Greek-Roman culture in Palestine in order to support the Roman Empire. It seemed that the Sadducees were located in Jerusalem, in control of the temple, and moved very seldom throughout Palestine unless it was to go meet with Roman authorities to figure out how to continue the status quo. This is the way the Sadducees interpreted the Torah. The Pharisees, however, had a different way of interpreting the Torah. While the Pharisees supported the temple, they also felt that the rituals and practices needed to go local and have local expressions as well. So it seems that they supported and encouraged the growing influence of synagogues and the practice of ritual throughout all of Palestine. Indeed, the Pharisees are found in Galilee debating with Jesus, as we shall see. So while the Sadducees were centralized in Jerusalem, it seems the Pharisees tended to decentralize their way of teaching the Torah. While the Pharisees in general tended to support the Romans, there were factions within the Pharisees' movement that would support opposition to the Romans eventually because they desired to have their way of practicing Torah move outside of Jerusalem and the temple, they would, to some degree, customize their Torah practice to local cultural tradition. So these are the two primary Jewish groups and the way that they practice Torah with the communities that supported them. So to explore Jesus' way of teaching the Torah, it needs to make sense within those village discipleship groups. It needs to make sense in a way that they can take Jesus' teaching as authoritative. So those village discipleship groups considered Jesus' way of teaching the Torah so significant that after his death, they were known as those who followed the way of Jesus. It is Jesus' halakha, Jesus' way of interpreting the Torah that made sense supported and gave life to the village communities that gathered around his name. In our sessions, we have referenced a collection of Jesus' teaching that were gathered in Galilee. This is probably the beginning, Jesus' halakha, the teaching of the way, for that saying source. Those communities in Galilee continued to gather together 
and mold the teachings of Jesus into a saying source that Matthew and Luke used in their Gospels. So the saying source that stands behind many of the teachings of Jesus found in Matthew and Luke help us understand Jesus' way of interpreting the Torah. We can call these teachings the community rules for these discipleship communities their guidelines, their covenant, their contract with each other. As we have the community rules in Matthew and Luke now, some of them may go back to the Jesus of history. Some of them may have been developed as the communities learn to live together after Jesus' death. And some of them may have a kernel of what Jesus taught while he was alive, but were interpreted again by these discipleship communities. There are also teachings of Jesus that are preserved in the Gospel of Mark, most often in what are called conflict stories. These are teachings of Jesus that are short and sweet. Let me give you an example of two of Jesus' teachings of the Torah that seem to be unique to his discipleship community. Within his discipleship community, Jesus teaches it is not lawful for a man to divorce his wife even though within the Jewish culture of Palestine, divorce is readily available. So divorce in Jesus' lifetime in small villages in Galilee must mean something significantly different than divorce in the 21st century. It is also clear that Jesus prohibited people in his discipleship communities to take public or community owes. While even today there are Christian communities that take this teaching very seriously, in the time of Jesus and in our time, taking an oath was a common cultural phenomenon. Jesus said, just be truthful. Say yes when you mean yes, and no when you mean no. In Jesus' time, as in our time, the way we interpret is very significant. And the way we understand Jesus' teaching within the history of Jesus and the life of Jesus is not the same as preaching Jesus' teachings in the 21st century. In order to understand the teachings of Jesus in his own historical context, They must make sense to Jewish villagers living in the first century. They are the ones who came together in discipleship groups and considered his teachings authoritative. We will continue to look at the teachings of Jesus during our sixth session of Within the Shadow of the Galilean.